Of course. Uh, thanks so much to start off, Gareth, and also thanking uh, Pete Racker for the invite. It's a very, very honour and privilege indeed to speak amongst uh, everyone on the panel. Um, a little bit about us. Stand of Hong Kong is a completely independent grassroots crowdfund initiated group of individuals who have come together to fight for freedom and democracy for Hong Kong. While our members are situated all around the world, we are one of the Hong Kongers led groups active in the UK. So since our establishment in the wake of the anti-extradition law movement last year, the team has launched various awareness campaigns starting in the UK with advertising campaigns across UK media outlets uh, and organizing and coordinating more than 40 events globally and produce awareness raising videos. We have seen expanded to lobbying in the UK, the United States, the European Union and other countries. And our logic is this, the Chinese Communist Party continues to exploit Hong Kong's international status while slowly eradicating the city's language, culture, freedom and economic self-sufficiency. Hong Kong's uniqueness and indeed our value to Beijing is in our international ties. Therefore, Hong Kongers must lean on the international community in our demand for democracy. So in August last year, we co-organized the Power to the People rally with representatives from universities and higher education institutions, where we called for international support. And in the past, we've also engaged with Uyghur and Tibetan activists in the UK in order to unite in solidarity under the recognition that we are being ground under the feet of the same totalitarian regime. Now much has changed since 2019 and with the introduction of the draconian national security law, even participation in this online rally, as many before me has noted, just participation in this rally could put all of us at risk of persecution. But we must not lose faith in Hong Kong. Many other totalitarian regimes are watching to see how much oppression the democratic world is prepared to tolerate for economic benefits. And the fight for freedom in Hong Kong is now a fight for freedom everywhere. I'd like to highlight one of the most inspiring features of Hong Kong's democratic movement. In the looming shadow of China, Hong Kongers have demonstrated solidarity across traditionally divided camps. Protesters have moved past a divisive mindset and united to exemplify leadership without any formal authority. Technology might have facilitated this leaderless movement, but it's the fundamental understanding of democracy that has brought all of us together. The philosophy can be summed up in one phrase, brothers climbing mountains, working independently together. Under this principle, Hong Kongers have also mobilized using new and truly grassroots tactics, we formed new unions, organized towards the general strike, participated in yellow economic circles in order to support pro-democracy businesses. We've created works of protest arts and written songs, and we've built relationships with overseas allies of all stripes based on the common understanding that the suffering that Hong Kong people are enduring is interconnected with broader struggles against state authoritarianism, against police brutality, and against unaccountable authority. We at Stand with Hong Kong strongly believe that we must build solidarity for Hong Kong on all levels, based on an internationalist ethic. This is why we are grateful to not only have the support of various MPs and peers across parties, but also that of trade unions, students, human rights activists, and more and more members of the general public for our cause. This is particularly important given the UK's historic relationship with Hong Kong. Hong Kong is Britain's former colony, there's no denying that. And when the Sino-British Joint Declaration was signed and the sovereignty was transferred to China. Hong Kongers did not have a seat at the table, did not get a say in what would become of our city, our home. And for this very reason, we think it is particularly important to galvanize people in the UK to act. This is not a matter of colonial nostalgia, but a matter of asking Britain to hold China to account over its violation of the Joint Declaration, which is an international legal treaty. We are also calling for Magnitsky-style sanctions against the individual perpetrators of human rights. We are pushing for the UK to further extend its offer for safe sanctuary for not only the BNO holders, but the younger ones uh, and all of them who will inevitably suffer greater persecution in the months and years to come. We hope to continue to fight for greater awareness and solidarity among all levels of British society, even when the cameras turn away from our home. 
I'd just like to end with a quote from the preamble of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The inherent dignity and the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. The world we live in right now is dark and turbulent, but take heart, if we continue to resist and persevere in our principles, we will eventually succeed. Thank you so much for your time.